The fifth generation of Pokemon sought to sort of soft reboot the franchise, and as such, we got all sorts of cool and cool designs for the Pokemon themselves. So with this context, were shiny Pokemon colors going to be any better? I don't know yet, we haven't gone through them. So let's start. Victini, old number zero on the regional decks. It's pretty simple. The golden fur normally resembles the golden flesh of various apples, since it's designed after Japanese apple rabbits. Well, now it's just lighter. It's the more white flesh of various other species of apples. Now, the yellows on the Snivy line follow the rest of the grass starters, swapping for their more autumn-based colors, but the rest of them, not so much. But this bluish-green color is even better, though, as there are a number of species of ivy that appear a bit bluish-green, especially as ivy tends to have much more glossy leaves, making them reflect the blues of the sky. Tepig is yellow now, and pigs do come in a strawberry blonde color. Pig Knight and Embor, though, swap their outfit colors, and clothes can, of course, be any color, wrestling singlets included. But hey, at least we finally have a Pokemon with exposed flames that doesn't turn pink or purple. Blue fire like this, though, tends to be symbolic of spiritual fire, meaning things like fighting spirit, chi, think the Hadoken and such, Kamehameha blue energy fire. Oshawott and Duwat, of course, follow the trend of water types Chinese making them appear underwater, and swaps their blue for purple, another sort of rule, but Samurott then goes high contrast and gets more pearlescent shells. Plenty of Murex shells have pink parts like this, though normally it's the interior, not the exterior. Patrat gets darker, rodents come in all sorts of shades, and the eyes get blue to follow the red-blue detail swap rule, but Watchog swaps the colors of its high-vis safety outfit. In Japan, yellows and oranges are done mostly for construction and road workers, and then this neon green highlighter yellow color is done for various other work that requires high-vis gear. The Lillipup line just sort of changes the shade of the dog. Herdier looks kinda older, but Stoutland looks a bit younger, having more color in its reddish-orange-blonde beard. Common color for beards in Scotland. Purloin's colors make it look like you're seeing it at nighttime, when cat burglars are on the prowl. Lipard, though, turning scarlet red, perhaps is a reference to Carmen Sandiego, or the novel The Spy Wore Red. Red is a color once commonly associated with sneaky, prowly spy types and thieves because of the Red Scare and the Cold War and espionage and such. All of these three wise monkeys just sort of adjust their lightness a bit. Different shades. The only notable one is Panpor, who gets the classic water type underwater aquamarine shift. Muna's pink is now yellow, like some to appear, or perhaps to appear like the glowing moon in the night sky. Musharna's colors also now are much more night sky-esque. So here's a fun one. Pidov and Unpheasant just sort of change a bit? Nothing out of the ordinary, just different sorts of pigeons and pheasants, but Tranquil! Someone snapped a glow stick over it! Like, why would you do this? What is wrong? Are you okay? Why are you irradiate? It's the mullet. The mullet made it irradiated because mullets were popular at the same time that nuclear waste and radiation was popular as a plot device in media because of the Cold War shenanigans that were all happening. Do I need to call you a doctor? Blitzel's blue, which is a common color for lightning, and Zebstrika's dark purple contrasts well with its retro electric green eyes and stripes when attacking. It looks really cool. Gigalith's line. So crystals and gemstones come in just about every color, but now the rocks themselves are purple. But I guess the default there was an odd bluish purple already, so it's not that different. But the purple is now a bit more apparent. And well, purple rocks aren't as uncommon as you'd think. There are all sorts, like aventurine and fluorite. Woobat and Swoobat are just straight up the color of those glow-in-the-dark stars now. Speaking of which, did you know that on Noggin.net you can get yourself a glow-in-the-dark Pokemon alchemy circle design on a shirt? It's pretty sweet, very soft, and I know you'll absolutely love it. Check it out with the link in the description. But back to Swoobat, it's yellow now, like fluffy yellow-bellied bats. Drillbur just kind of swaps its nose and stripe colors around. Excadrill's stripes, though, follow the red-blue swap detail rule, so it's also not very exciting. But the rest of it is red now, too. Perhaps it's been digging through red clay. 
Audino was a little nurse, and pastelli, greens, pinks, purples, and blues tend to be the most common nurse outfits, especially the pastel versions in media. The timber line pretty much just swap their skin tones and the exact materials that they're working with. But the veins swapping from a totally normal pink to this bright orange is concerning. Uh, I suppose rather than popping veins, the idea now is that they're bright orange construction outfits. The Seismitoad line, though, uh, these are all colors that toads come in still. Amazing. Sock and Throw sorta have no reasons for their default colors, so no real reasons for these ones either. Uh, they just tweak their hue a bit. But the Levani line, autumn colors. Venipedes colors are now more common among real centipedes and millipedes, and then the other two just sort of tweak their main shade a bit. But the circle patterns went from pink to this neato bright green cyanide, cyan -y color, is what I meant to say there. Uh, it makes me think of those super poisonous uh, blue ringed octopus, which also have a ton of arms. Centipedes and millipedes don't really have rings, but some do have patterns like this one. So, just make it green. Whimsicott's line gets their cotton more cleaned and processed. Cottony, also on top of that, gets autumn colors, and Whimsicott's body turns more dark brown to better resemble the sticks that the cotton grows on. We'll go with that. Uh, and then the blue, best I got is that blue sky, because the Aries ram is the ram of the sky, so it's the zodiac because Gen 5 had a bunch of Zodiac stuff, and it was Ares, the Ram, Blue Sky. Betalil just lightens up a bit, and Lilligit just swaps its flower for a pink lily. The rest of its yellow and bluish body could reference the gopher plant, which could be used in aromatherapy, I suppose. Uh, the basculins are just lighter and get golden fins. If anything, that makes them slightly more accurate to real bass now. Sandile is super cute, and is yellow now, helps it hide in yellow sand, and yellow crocodiles are indeed... things. But then Crocorock and Crocodile... Oh... Look what they did to my boy! The eyes! The eyes, they look so... beady now! The darker brown helps them blend in with dirt, I guess, which is more common ground than sand, and it's more accurate to real crocodiles, but still, the poor eyes! It's supposed to look like sunglasses, now it just looks dumb. Oh, but, but shiny Darubaka is cute baby pink, and Darmanitan is purpley now with pink flames like... most, if not all, of the shiny Pokémon with exposed flames besides Empor. Also Zen Mode. While red is the most common and traditional color for Daruma dolls, purple and blues do still exist. Maractus! Cactus flowers come in yellow, and some cacti have fleshy parts that are pink! Like the hot pink moon cactus! Dwebble! Barely changes at all. But Crustal is very green now, like the green-legged hermit crab. Scrafty! Like, doesn't even change, like what? This is worse than Fanfy. Like, what the heck? But Scrafty lightens up to match its Prevo, and then the loose skin which resembles baggy clothes is now neon green. Clothes can be any color, and neons like this are typically associated with a punky aesthetic. And also there are plenty of lizards with bright green skin. Sigilyph is a Nazca line Kachinka doll, and both of these color combos, as in its shiny and its original, are traditional for the peoples of the surrounding regions where those were found. Yamask is based on the Egyptian Ba, which had green and dark blue feathers, hence the dark blue here. And the mask it carries, as well as the sarcophagus on its evolution, went from gold to silver. Interestingly, while gold is considered to be the skin of the gods to Egyptians, monetarily speaking, the ancient Egyptians sought silver more than gold, thus silver was more valuable, thus the shiny color is an upgrade to them. The purpley pink bits work here too, as pink and purple dyes were considered much more valuable than blues and greens. Tortuga? Aquamarine shift. Caracosta? Darker, deeper waters. Archon and Archeops? Well, dinosaur and ancient animal illustrations tended to get really creative with their colors. Which may be what both their shiny and normal colors could be alluding to. Uh, we've since discovered the melanins of the Archaeopteryx, and have now reached a much more clearer idea of its real colors. 
and this Pokemon perfectly resembles neither. It's just a colorful bird, as birds tend to be. Trubbish and Garboder's shinies are really just perfect descriptions of the many races of humanity. Just trash in different colors. The Zoroark line are based on fox spirits, and these colors do say spirit much more than just edgy hot topic fox now. Now, like most of the we want to market this Pokemon as a cutie patootie Pokemon, Mincino's shiny is pink because it's cute. And then Cincino is yellow banana cream pie colors, which lighter chinchillas can appear as. The Gothitelle line goes from a goth girl line to a pastel goth girl line, which was another big trend in Japan. The Reuniclus line get a bit more accurate to real cells, which tends to be mostly colorless, so the colors here are more muted now. It looks a bit clearer as well. Rubber ducks are super common toys for babies and tots, and Ducklet goes from a baby boy blue to a baby girl pink, and Swana's ballerina outfit is just purple now because clothes can be any color and purple's a really common color for ballerinas. Oh jeez. The ice cream cones. Just remember, they aren't actually ice cream. They are sentient icicles that decorate the snow on top of themselves to appear like ice cream so that people like them more and think they are cute. Though I think that backfired on them. Anyway, Vanillite is pink now, like the pink ice on the Italian Alps. Sometimes snow on certain mountains turn pink due to an algae bloom. The other two are just darker, though. Not much to go on. Now, how do you change the color of something that comes in four colors already? Well, you just change one element of it. Deerling's yellow flower is just a pink flower now, and Sazbuck goes from a brown deer to a red deer, which are more common in Japan. Imolga looks much more like an actual flying squirrel now, as does Carablast, though, though with a scarab, <laughs> not with a flying squirrel. Uh, Escavalier's armor gets a bit shinier, and the red turns pink, though this shade of pink was rarely, if ever, used for these purposes because it was very hard to make color, so very valuable, so why would you waste it on a knight? Fungus and Amoongus turn purple, like the ultra-rare Master Ball, and Frillish and Jellicent turn into their this pastel -y, kinda fluorescent-esque color. Colors, I guess, because there's a bunch of them. Uh, because they are still fancy, and jellyfish come in all sorts of colors, including this glowy green, which is the weirdest of the four. Aloma Mola is just deeper underwater looking now, perhaps. Otherwise, it's just slightly more accurate to real Mola Mola fish, but not by much. Uh, ooh, but so good! Joltik is highlighter yellow and purple now, which is such a cool looking color combo, right? There are yellow ticks, though that doesn't really change with the shiny. Uh, and then Galvantula just adds contrast by darkening and desaturating its inner body. Again, plenty of yellow tarantula. Pharaoh seeds, now blue thorns, make it look a bit like the blue thorn flower. It even has the right shape. And then Pharaoh thorn now looks like fool's gold or iron pyrite, since it's made of iron and all. And its now red vines resemble Japanese wineberry vines. Red and covered in thorns. Look, they even end in the bulbous spiky bit. The Kling Kling line are just golden brass gears now, and Tynamo and Electric barely change at all. Electros does turn green though, like the green moray eel, I suppose. Elgium is no longer a little green man, but rather a gray, another common depiction of aliens. And Behem also, like, doesn't change barely at all. What the heck? Maybe. Maybe as a trench coat spy, it's trying to hide that it's a shiny so it doesn't stand out. Hmm. Litwick and Lampent are even more spirity, and as a change of pace, Chandelure's fire goes from purple to orange, instead of orange to purple like almost all of the other exposed firemon. It's just regular fire now, how exciting. Axu's line has a different reason for each one. Haxorus is just shiny Charizard edgy colors, edgy for the sake of being edgy and cool. I mean, it literally has an axe for a face. It's as edgy as can be. Fracture does the red-blue detail swap, but it also makes them sort of look crystalline, like it's a magical dragon with magical dragon crystals, crystal stuff, because that's a thing. And then Axu just looks dirty. Bear tick just looks colder, since it's using cooler colors, and Cub Chew must have been sneezing so much and so hard, the poor thing! All the pressure has just made its whole head bruise! I feel so bad! 
Now, I'm not sure of the intent behind making Cryogonal warmer looking in the shiny. It's just shinier, more glisteny sunrise snowflake, I guess. But god, I freaking love Shelmet. The shinies of its line are easy, though. Golden, mystery snails. The triad color of Stunfisk's yellow is this cyan color, and the rest of it now looks more accurate to real yellowtail flounder. So there's that. The Mindfu line trade pink for purple, and then purple for pink. Their fur resembles the robes worn by various martial artists, especially Shaolin Kung Fu monks. And clothes can, of, can of course, be any color. Fancy pink and purple satins and silk robes included. Especially when we're talking about the long, flowy robes that Mind Chao resembles, which were used in Chinese opera to add dramatic effect to the fights, which is also where Mind Chao's makeup comes in. Now Jodagon looks like an oak leaf. And a dying, yellowing oak leaf. What the heck? Well, there is the Eastern Collared Lizard with its cool green body and yellow head. The Golurk line when shiny have your classic spooky colors now, since they are ghost type, and shiny Ponyard and Bisharp swap red for blue, either due to the red-blue swap rule or due to how red and blue are often the two colors of enemy factions in media. Games especially, and especially, especially strategy games, which these guys are all about. Most American bison are just the brown color that Bufalant is, but there are also red buffalo. Heck, they even come in blonde. Rufflet! While baby bald eagles are gray and white like regular rufflet, their adolescent stage is more brown, and most other species of eagle and hawk are brown at this point too. And then Braviary also turns brown bodied, and then the reds and blues just swap places. Either because of the red blue swap rule, or because that's all they came up with. It's still a bird with red, white, and blue accent feathers, though. And yellow's there also. The Mandibuzz line really gets more saturated browns and a lot pinker. It's an all-female species, so pink. Heatmore actually manages to look cooler somehow, though. It's a darker, more burnt engine with deeper magma colors. Then, Durant is now either rose gold or a pearly brass. Orochi, the legendary multi-headed dragon from Japan, is one of the big inspirations of the Hydrogen line, and in its most famous depiction by Toyohara Chikanobu, has him with green scales, just like its shiny color. Zmei Gorngich is another big inspiration, a three-headed Slavic dragon. It's often depicted as green as well, sometimes even with these purple accents. It works really well. Volcarona's line is all about the sun, and through our atmosphere, the sun appears more yellow rather than orange, hence the shiny color. Now, the Swords of Justice are based on the Three Musketeers, which despite their name have a fourth, hence Keldeo. Now, all their bits and bobs and frills and all that are inspired by various articles of clothing worn by musketeers and people of the time period, and clothes can of course be any color, but there is more here. The personalities of the Musketeers, and thus these Pokémon, shines through their shiny colors really well too, such as Verizion being based on Aramis, considered the most flamboyant and feminine of the group, thus the shiny is pink. Terrakion is based on Porthos, the biggest, strongest, and most aggressive of them. The color red in its shiny here is a symbol of all of those traits, and Cobalion's shiny is just even more cobalt. But, being based on Athos, the oldest and leader of the group, he of course always gets the gold. So, the brighter yellow bits, perhaps? Then Keldeo's pastel blue turns pastel green. Pastels, perhaps because just like Diarpnan of the Three Musketeers, he is the fourth and most recent addition. He is the youngest, he is the baby of the group. As for why green of all the pastel colors though, well, either it's the aquamarine water type rule, or it's just that Keldeo is based on a Kelpie, after all. And if not gray or black, Kelpies are most commonly a greenish color. The forces of nature trio don't really change much. Tornadus and Landorus just lighten up, and so does Thunderous, though the purple in it does also raise its saturation a bunch. The Kami Raijin that it's based on has red skin, which this bright pinkish purple could be emulating in a way. Don't know though. Reshirams and Zekrom's shinies swap each other's eye colors, showing balance in all things or something like that. And Zekrom overall gets a slight hue shift to dark blue, which could be to show higher power as it fires blue lightning after all. Except when it's shiny, it doesn't. It fires its green lightning now. 
which isn't unheard of for lightning, but it is rare. And then Reshiram gets these golden rings. The yin-yang symbol that this duo symbolize is often engraved into golden artifacts due to its significant importance, and these days they are found all over golden rings as jewelry. But more important, and more relevant perhaps, is that given that these two big rings are around the engine tail, well, some engine parts, especially the higher-end nicer ones, are gold-colored. Also, when its fire is exposed, it's pink. Because of course it is! And then QRM gets a cool, dark blue icy body, and its blue ice turns white, even harsher ice crystals. The interesting bit is that its yellow horn turns pink now. So normally, it's yellow possibly because red fire and blue lightning. Yellow is the other primary color. So then the magenta pink and the shiny... Well, the other's shinies are green and pink. So that doesn't equal anything. But maybe this is why Reshiram has those yellow rings and Zekrom's got the cyan eyes. Yellow, cyan, and magenta is another color triangle. Maybe that's why shiny Kiram has the magenta horn. And when it merges with the others, it just combines Zekrom's shiny green, but then it keeps the non-shiny Reshiram red. I guess that's so that it doesn't get confused with the shiny's pink fire and Kyurem's pink horn. Hmm. Confusing. Well, Meloetta. What color is music? Well, in Meloetta's Aria form, her hair is green, and then in its shiny, it's a cooler shade of green. And Aria is basically a vocal solo, like in an opera with a single singer. So that's green, I guess. And then pirouette form has orange hair normally, and now it's pink in the shiny. A pirouette is the ballet move that Meloetta is doing in that form. Uh, pink tutus in ballet is a thing. Uh, I don't really think these shinies really have a particular reference besides feminine colors, I guess. Uh, but thankfully, we get to end with a bang! Arguably the most well-known Gen 5 shiny, Genesect. Why is Genesect purple to begin with? Who knows, but its shiny is red now. Why? Well, good reason, actually. Basically, it was entirely for the movie, as the shiny Genesect leads the group of Genesect in the movie. And in a lot of media, especially aimed at kids, the red guy tends to be the leader of the group. Think every group of Super Sentai and Power Rangers. There's also Science Ninja Team Gotcha Man, Kids Next Door, Totally Spies, The Powerpuff Girls, 2011 Thundercats, One Piece, The Teen Titans, Iron Man of the Avengers, Lloyd Irving, Mario, Ash Ketchum. I mean, heck, Donkey Kong's Ty. He's the leader of the bunch. You know him well. Red is a very heroic and strong color, so it works well as the color of a leader. Even if there are other heroes with the color, like in Justice League and Young Justice, the leader still has red. And so, Red Genesect being the leader just works. And that's awesome. So, did you learn anything neat? Have any better ideas for some reasonings on some of these? Let me know down below, and check out noggin.net for some great merchandise. This one's glow in the dark, it's really cool. And never stop using your noggin.